Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We'll be looking at part 2 of the cataloging item series where we'll be looking at some accessories and a whole bunch of furniture items. There were some incredible items and I'm looking forward to showing you what we managed to get in there. Let's start by showing you the accessory section. I won't be going through every single item individually, but you can see how many we've got right here. Now this took me around 30 minutes to catalogue and we picked up some awesome new items. Now if you want to see some of them that I managed to grab, make sure you check out my Harms Island video in the description and you'll see a few of the items that I was putting on to some of the villages and characters that I've got on my island. And now we're heading to an island which I think is fairly obvious what is here and that's every single furniture item available in the game i'm paying 400 nook mile tickets for this opportunity which again i do not think is a bad price at all to say this would take a long time to gather if i was to do it all from scratch i think we're starting here in a plant section everything is nice and labeled for us we've got section one there and the host has actually sent me over a nice read me as well so i can see what's going on but you can see there in the background how many furniture items we really do have here on to section two where i think we've got a few instruments in here got a couple of record boxes amps rock guitar you can see the numbers there in the background that just goes to show how many items we really have here we're only on number two we can already see number 13 over there. Although it might take two hours just to collect everything here, it might seem like a lot, but when you're looking for individual items and you're going to different people's island to collect each one, the time really can start to add up and two hours will be absolutely nothing in comparison to the amount of time that it'll take you to find the seller to start with, then head to their island once they're free and available, then finally catalogue the item. I would say it's much, much easier to do it this way. The likelihood is you're going to get a lot of duplicates that you've already catalogued in the past, but at least you know then that you've catalogued everything that's there. We nearly messed up there and opened one of the bottles. I was a little bit scared that would happen at some point whilst doing all of this, because it's very, very easy, especially when I'm doing things like this, where I'm just hammering down on the A button, and all it would take is for me to land on one of the messages and accidentally open it and there's no way of going back once you're on the message you can't put it back in the bottle it's open forever so let's try our best not to do that whilst i've been doing this video there are so many things that i would love for them to introduce into the game that would really help when you're trading things or when you're cataloging items because it's such a big part of the animal crossing community everybody wants to trade everyone wants to catalog items and it's just such a big thing that i really think you need to make it easier for people to do it even if it's a situation where they bring out some form of trading system that just helps people out trade a little bit more comfortably so it brings up like a trade screen that way both players can accept a trade there's no situations where you're putting items on the floor people scam other people and it kind of rules that out and i think although animal crossing is a great game there are a lot of things that could be changed just to help i think one thing i would probably add just to help me with this really really long effort and tedious activity is just a button that would just be drop all drop all your inventory anything that you can drop let it drop it and odd a multi drop so you select an area and it just drops everything in the closest square it possibly can i think it would be quite hard but even if it was a, a situation where if you've got all nine squares that are underneath you all of them are free for an item to be dropped then you could click drop all and highlight the items in your, in your bag or just it might just pick nine items at, at random and then drop all of them in the space that's there. I know I've said it before, but I do think it is so much easier when people create these designated areas for each section or each category or each style of an item. It just it just helps really when you're putting things down, especially when you've got this nice grid of nine that's already laid out for you that you can see exactly where things need to go. And I think it just helps visually as well just to understand exactly what it is that you've picked up and you haven't picked up. 
Whereas when things are just scattered all over the floor, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult sometimes just to make sure that you get everything. But you'll find that a lot of these hosts will do this day in, day out. This is how they make their Nook Mile tickets. There's a lot of money to be made. They've made 400 from me. There is someone else also here doing the same thing. That's 800 Nook Mile tickets. It can take around two hours maybe for us to both get it all done. So that's two hours and they've made 800 Nook Mile tickets. That is a lot of tickets. 800 Nook Mile tickets can pretty much get you anything in the game, I would say. Um, I've got quite a lot just from doing my buying and selling. I don't make anywhere near as much as these guys do. Two hours for 800 Nook Mile tickets is an absolutely great way of making some money. But obviously it takes time to get to this situation where you've got all of these items and you're able to host something as big as this honestly you can find a lot of people doing this if you just head to one of the discord pages you can find a lot of people who are doing catalog events like this but you've got to save up quite a lot of nook mile tickets if you want to find someone who's got this and has got a really really good collection and if you do find someone you might be paying a lot of money i would say the 400 nook mile tickets tends to be the same amount for for this amount of stuff i've had three or four different people and all of them were asking for the same amount and to be honest i think it's just because it's easier 400 knock mile tickets is the maximum you can carry at any one time i'm gonna ask the host here because i know they've got the other flooring and wallpaper so maybe they've also got all of the sahara items you can see up there there's also all of the music as well and i'm not actually sure if that's something which is part of what I've paid for but I guess we'll soon find out when we get over to that section. The main things I've been looking for are all the furniture items, all of the flooring and the wallpaper items and then the headwear, the accessories and I also want all the shirts but I know that there are a lot of shirts and t-shirts in the game so it's going to be quite hard to find someone who's got all of those but hopefully if we do manage then we can complete the set. I know there's the shoes as well, but I'm not overly bothered about collecting all the shoes. It may be something I get later down the line, but at this stage, it's not really something that I'm too bothered about. You can actually save quite a lot of Nook Mile tickets by doing this and heading to an island that's got everything already. Because if you start buying sets individually, they soon start to add up. So I know that I, in the past, I've purchased a full pinball set or a full uh, diner set just so I've got the full set and then I can use it on my island wherever I want to use it but then when you start doing that with every single set 20 nook mile tickets every time you start to spend far far too much money another good thing about these islands in particular where you've got all of the items is that hosts tend to just keep a couple of people here on the last one it was just myself and then here it's just myself and one other person but obviously we've got that much to pick up we're not leaving we're not coming and going all the time which really helps just so you can blast through it and get as many items as possible because there's nothing worse than having eight different people all here doing the same thing taking all the items and it just it just makes the whole process a lot 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 slower and to be honest it is a little bit irritating especially when I was doing turnips so they have the host wants as many people in there as possible obviously so that they can make the maximum amount of profit but then when you've got the host and then the seven other random people all coming and going from an island it's it just turns into chaos and honestly it just gets a little bit irritating when all you want to do is sell your turnips and go but then you've got someone else coming someone else leaving and then someone else disconnects and you've got to start again and it's just a little bit frustrating so when you get in a situation like this where you can just you've got the entire place just to roam around get whatever you need to get and go it really does help so much you might not need half the stuff that is here but then at least you do know that you have got it so if you do need it then you've got it forever you can also help your friends out so if they've not got it and you need to order something then you're absolutely fine because they can really help you out and you can help them out so if you've got all the items they need something ordering absolutely no problem they can help you out and send you whatever item you're looking for and with that said if any of you guys that are watching are looking for a specific item i have spent all these nook mile tickets on the items if you want me to leave my friend code somewhere on the in the description or in the comments then please let me know and i can order any item in the game that you're looking for i'm not going to start ordering tens of 
thousands of items per person but if you're looking for two specific items that i can send to you then that's no problem i don't mind helping you out on a few things with the stuff that i've got i tend to have the things that i need so i'd have like the pinball table i think i've got one billiards table which i didn't even buy i think i got that from a uh either from the nook nook shop or i may have even got it from a one of the villagers i'm not actually quite sure but i've only got one variant whereas when i'm here at least I, I know that i'm getting all of the variants so what the host has done is the player who's already here has been here for quite a while they've let them get a few positions ahead that way now i'm in at number 13 i won't catch up and then they can just grab things move on i grab things move on and it just helps a little bit to keep things moving now i'd say the only downside of doing things like this is that you don't tend to be able to catalog the items that you can't reorder so the items that i'd be looking for are things like the ufo i am hoping that it is something i can catalog because i want all of the item when you come to islands like this they tend to just throw all the items down that you can actually reorder not the items that are part of sets or from Sahara or from Celeste any of the items that you can create using DIYs don't tend to be items that they allow you to catalog really even if I've got a few inventory slots left I will tend to just grab the entire nine square and then once I've got the nine square I will start throwing things back down on the floor and then move to another full nine square that way I know that I've still got that section to do it is times like this where I go into autopilot mode and I'll end up just picking things up and dropping things and completely forget which ones I have picked up and which ones I, I haven't. But I usually start from one side in these ones. That way I know that I've got a few left on the other side. It kind of looks like what the host has done. He's put them into sections and then in each section he's kind of thrown like a random thing in there like the fireplace. Or they've gone for like a room or they've gone for like the beach that we had earlier. And then that way it just splits it all up and you kind of know what it is you're looking for see with all these sort of beach balls and things i've never actually ever owned one the footballs anything like that the uh, i think one of the beach balls is shaped like a it's like a watermelon design i've never had that some of the really cool items that i've never actually come across i've never been lucky enough to get them from my diys or anything like that i feel like it's a little bit easier to keep track of what you're collecting and to make sure that you're actually getting all of the variants from the host because when you're walking around here it's all laid out in nice sections now whilst it's in sections you know what you're looking for if you find a laptop you know that there's going to be two or three different variations so when you're going through your inventory to drop the items that's the best place to look at them and you'll also notice the other things that i'm dropping here you'll have seen lots of different ones before now that's one of the biggest issues i think with this game when it comes to buying and selling things i think the biggest issue is when you're buying and selling red art pieces so when you're buying the red art pieces by red i don't mean the color red i mean the character red who sells fake and genuine art pieces so when you're buying things like statues and things like that there is no way of telling if it's real or if it's fake until you finally get to your town or that person's town but either way you speak to blathers you get him to have a look at the item and he will tell you if it is real or if it is fake if it is fake then you're losing a lot of money on it because the, the price difference really is huge i'm not sure if i've mentioned it so far but if you are dropping the items and you've got a nice little area that you want to put them in make sure you're standing in the center of where they will all be landing because if you don't then you're going to struggle to put them all down and you'll just have to come out of the bag and start again just to move things around and it can start to slow things down if you're doing it every time once twice isn't too bad but when you start doing it over and over again it really does add to the time it takes to get everything in total there is still plenty more to see on this island but i'm going to save that for part three of the series so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss those if you haven't already checked out my latest giveaway then make sure you head to my previous pirate and mermaid items guide which will be linked in the description all you have to do is leave a like and comment on any video after and including that one and you'll be entered remember liking and commenting on multiple videos will give you multiple entries i only need 10 people to take part in the race so make sure you enter for your chance to win i really do hope you enjoyed the video please remember to leave me a like and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you on next time.